Hey friends, and welcome back to the vlog. I'm Samantha, and most of you know me as someone who produces travel content for the blog. But that wasn't always the case. I actually started this blog back in 2017 as part of a college class requirement. And back then, I wasn't nearly as passionate about traveling as I am now. I still loved to travel, but I wasn't as well equipped or as courageous to travel, especially solo back in 2017. And little did I know that traveling would play such a big part in my life five years down the line. So because I wasn't as big into travel back then, I had to find other things to blog about. And this is where today's blog theme subject comes into play. Today, we are going to be going through everything that I blogged about back in 2017. Well, not everything. But we're going to be going through the archives to see exactly what kind of blogger I was back then. This is going to be a crazy, hilarious, shocking surprise for the both of us because I haven't even gone through the archives of this blog since I don't even know when. And I have a vague idea, memory of the things that I used to blog about and some of them were definitely out there. I'm really excited to dive into the archives and just kind of take a stroll through memory lane, and I think it'll be fun for both of us to do it together. Okay, obviously we need to start with the very first blog post I ever produced, which was in June of 2017. Oh my God, you guys. My old blog posts, I'm so cute. They're very like, I don't even know how to phrase this, almost like Buzzfeed clickbaity style. Like they're cute, they're not badly written or anything like that, but they're just such a departure from the things that I blog about now. Let me show you. Okay, so everyone's familiar with the homepage of the blog, I'm sure but you may not have known that you can actually scroll all the way to the bottom of the homepage and find the archives right here. So I'm just gonna select month and go all the way down to June of 2017. That's when I first started the blog. And then these are all of our posts from that month. I think I did a fairly good job of publishing every week the way that I do now. This was our first post ever on June 1st, 2017. Oh my God. When I think of summer, so many different thoughts come to mind. The first one is, of course, no class. Proof I was still in school when I wrote this blog post. I'll wake up the first day of break at 2 p.m. Who's waking up at 2 p.m.? That's crazy. I mean, I guess as a college student, maybe, but now as an adult, waking up at 2 p.m., my whole day is gone. Apparently, 2017-year-old Samantha also didn't want to leave my bed except to grab snacks from the kitchen and for the occasional pee. Seriously, if you guys haven't read this first blog post, check it out now before I decide it's too embarrassing to keep it up on the blog. This first blog post was actually about my top 10 ideas for summer fun. So very like listicle, lighthearted style. I feel like comparing it to Buzzfeed is still like it makes sense. Like it's something that you would read on Buzzfeed. Some of these ideas aren't half bad either. Host a dinner party, go camping, go to an amusement park or water park. There's some quality stuff here and I definitely wrote a lot more in the posts. I mean, I didn't create or produce videos like this for any of my blog posts back in 2017. So there's a lot more writing, a lot more like 
just genuine getting stuff out on a page content. Really like at my core here in 2017. I'm interested to see how my writing changed in 2018. So it looks like I actually produced posts every month in 2017 since starting it that June. I also produced posts every month in 2018 until June 2018. I wonder if that has something to do with classes being out or getting busy with other things. But let's go ahead and jump ahead a year to the June 2018 posts and see how different my writing was from 2017 to 2018. There's actually only one post that I published in June of 2018, and it was this destination coffee crawl. I used to produce coffee crawl posts all the time back then on the blog. I almost forgot that I did that until seeing this post. It was like a memory unlocked, but I literally used to do it all of the time. Once a month, I would review a new coffee shop either in the Oklahoma City Norman area, which is where I went to college, or the Tulsa area, which is where I live now. This one was an Oklahoma City coffee shop, and I do remember really, really enjoying coming here. This is kind of what the coffee shop looks like. I did used to take photos of all of these coffee shops. So even though I wasn't as big on media, like making videos back then, I still like to include visual aspects in my posts, like these photos. And it was still just as awkward taking these photos in a coffee shop surrounded by strangers as it is now when I'm traveling filming things while I'm traveling and doing new things surrounded by strangers. I do miss creating and producing coffee crawl posts for the blog. I used to do it quite frequently and it probably had something to do with the fact that I was still a student at the time. So I frequented a lot of coffee shops at the time and I really enjoyed it and it just made sense to me to turn that into something that I could create and produce for the blog. Kind of similarly to how I create and produce content related to all of my travels. It's something that I do quite often and something that I really enjoy and something that I figure I could do for other people as well, produce content for other people as well. I wanna say I probably did, I don't even know how many coffee crawls. Actually, you know what? I can check. If you haven't explored the blog as much, mostly just on it whenever I produce new posts, I would highly suggest taking the time to really look through every nook and cranny because obviously we're uncovering a lot just by looking through the archives. But with relation to coffee crawl posts, I actually still have a coffee crawl page available on the blog, a page where you can find all of my coffee crawl related posts. I probably produced at least two dozen coffee crawl posts. Again, from coffee shops all over Oklahoma. I think I also tried to produce a couple from different states when I started traveling more. Give them a look, check them out, and let me know in the comment section down below if you think I should start doing coffee crawl posts again. They're mostly superficial, so if you're really, really interested in my review of whether or not the coffee is good, sustainably sourced, all of those like really die hard coffee fan requirements or categories, I am probably not your best source for that kind of coffee information. Again, my coffee crawl posts are very base level, mostly just kind of a vibe of whether or not I liked the coffee or I liked the coffee shop. They're still very much for fun and very in line with how my earlier posts were produced, that kind of vibe, that kind of atmosphere. But I did enjoy producing them and 
since I am traveling a lot more, I could do a lot more coffee crawl posts from like different states or even different countries if I started traveling internationally more. Let me know what you think. I don't know if I'll actually end up doing it, but it's fun to dream and it's definitely fun to look back on that part of my life on the blog. Speaking of different types of series that I've done on the blog, another type of series that I did was a creative writing sort of series, poetry and prose, which is another kind of header and separate web page that you can find if you take the time to explore the blog a little bit. I don't want to jump too much ahead because I actually didn't start that series or that web page until 2020. So it's a little bit more recent, but that is definitely something I would recommend checking out as well. And after you do check it out, you can also let me know if you want to see more creative writing posts from me down in the comment section. You know what's a fun thing I realized? 2019 has a post for almost every single month of the year every single month except for October. We were so close. Let's go through 2019 and see what I posted about in that year and why it seems to be the first year that I really started to take the blog seriously. I think 2019 was the first year that I really started manifesting. At least this was the first year that the manifest really became an idea. I'm not sure if it looked the same back in 2019 as it does today, but it's kind of fun to think that I've been doing this for three, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, five years. My, my math was way off. For five years, I've been manifesting. That's kind of cool to see that that tradition has stayed alive on the blog. 2019 also seems to be the first year I continued doing these header photos. I think I started back in 2017, probably. I always tried to have some sort of visual media to go along with my posts, but it looks like I really tried to keep up with it in 2019. Okay, we can't go through the archives without talking about some of the gems that we've found so far. Like this Valentine's Day post, Valen Who? I don't even remember coming up with this title. This was supposed to be a how to be single on Valentine's Day post, which maybe that's what the who stands for. Who needs to be in a couple on Valentine's Day? I have no idea. This is another really good one from February 24th, 2019, Five Fields of Expertise, where I talk about the five fields I would consider myself an expert in. Can you guess what they are? I highly doubt it because they were actually five very obscure fields of expertise. One of them was solving one side one side of a Rubik's cube. This one must be the sister post to five fields of expertise, five fields of improvement. Somewhat similar to my first ever post on the blog, summer swag. I'm assuming it talks about all of the summer trends from the summer of 2019. Not that I've ever been very up to date on trends, so who knows what's in this post. In July of 2019, I took my first ever solo trip and I have all of the details right here in this post. I remember that this trip was a quick, maybe two day trip to Chicago on my way to Europe with my family. I had just done the first leg of the trip, the flight before the big Europe flight. I had done that on my own to Chicago. And this was the first time that I ever, I think had the courage to do something like this. So it was a very big deal and obviously laid a big foundation for my life today. Another really good one from 2019 is a day without water. This one is one of my posts that, I don't know, could have been really good for a bigger news site, maybe? It basically details a whole day that I lived in the United States without running water. It was a very eye-opening experiment for me. 
Not something that I did on purpose, but because of my surroundings, I just had to go the day without running water. And like I said, it was just very eye-opening. And I feel like maybe if I looked through this post again and did a refresh, I could end up publishing it with a bigger lens. Something for a bigger audience and a societally conscious audience. It was one of my favorites to have written and it feels a little bit out of place having it here on the blog because like I said, I think it needs a bigger, more societally conscious audience. But if you have the time, I definitely recommend giving it a read. We also had a lot of coffee shop posts in 2019. I really kept up with that coffee crawl. School Swag is the sister post to Summer Swag. This post, Nick Jonas through the years. And this post, seven reasons Chris Pine is the best Hollywood Chris, were two of the most fun ones that I'd ever written. I just decided that Nick Jonas and Chris Pine were two of my celebrity crushes, topics that I really wanted to write about, and I just went to town. These are very almost clickbaity, BuzzFeed type style posts. Again, not to say anything bad about them because I had a ton of fun writing them and they are fairly informative and just silly and lighthearted. In November 2019, I think I produced my first poetry-related post on the blog. And in December 2019, I talk about all of the best things that I produced that year on the blog, right here. So cute. 2019 had a lot of really good posts. Like I said, I produced posts for almost every single month that year. And the same goes for 2020. I think I only missed October and November in 2020. And of course, with most of us spending much of 2020 indoors and isolated, I had a lot of time to create stuff for the blog. Like I mentioned earlier too, that was the start of the poetry and prose kind of content that I produced for the blog. If you didn't know, I have two published poetry collections, which I talk about very heavily in 2020 on the blog. I don't have as many coffee crawl posts in 2020, probably because I was graduated. I didn't spend a lot of time in coffee shops as I had done previously when I was in school. And also because most of us were spending our time indoors and isolated. So I wasn't going out very often to visit coffee shops. The creative type of posts and series kind of took over. Similar to how the travel type posts took over at the start of 2021. Even though I haven't produced content, just content in itself or state guides even, on all of the states that I've visited, I do still have posts related to certain states that I started producing in 2021 when I came up with this goal to travel to all 50 states. So travel content really took over in 2021. And as you guys know, it's all I've been able to talk about over the last two years. I have honestly had a ton of fun going through all of the archives. I just think my style has definitely changed, but has always remained very unique. It's just so fun to see how, for example, the copy crawl series took up so much of my time and my energy and my passion back in 2017-2018. And then now, even though I still enjoy coffee and I still enjoy going to coffee shops, travel has really taken over my sort of creative desires. The things that I want to produce are travel related versus being coffee related or even creative poetry and prose related. I think it's been fun to go through all of those old posts and also really great for me to remember kind of where I started. I think especially today, there's so much pressure when it comes to content creation that didn't exist back in 2017 when I guess this was still really just 
part of a class requirement, really more of just a hobby for me. I produced things back then because I wanted to, because I thought they were fun and yes, timely, but mostly because I had the desire to come up with these crazy ideas, research stuff for a post, write it all out. And I think it's important to go through all of that old stuff and remember the kind of person, the kind of content creator I was five years ago and make sure that those values still drive the kind of content that I produce today. Even though my desires and intrigues have changed over time. I don't have plans anytime soon to take down any of the old posts that I've produced for the blog. But just in case I do, definitely make sure you go through some of those old posts and check them out. Go through all the coffee crawl posts, all the creative posts. Let me know if you like them or want me to produce more of them down in the comment section below. But even beyond that, go through my posts where I explore the weirdest corners of the internet. That's a fun one. Read through my random reviews. I did a couple of posts where I just reviewed random things on a five star scale. Go through my current events type posts. I used to post stuff about the holidays, how to celebrate, like Val and who? <laughs> They're just some of my wackiest works, but thoroughly enjoyable. I think you guys will get a kick out of them. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. If you missed my travel related post, don't worry, we'll get back to it next week. But if you've tired of my travel related posts recently, I hope you enjoyed this non-travel related video. And if you like my work as a whole, please make sure to subscribe to the blog. You can also follow me on the social media links down below. Thanks for joining me for today's video blog post, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!